All right, so now let's move to the union stage. Uh, and we will we have decided to split this uh, zone into uh, two. Uh, so we will first cover the first piece of the union stage uh, with uh, the five speakers. We will start with Andras Grabner, who will introduce us to Captain 08. Um, then we will have Miko Larkela, who was a part of a whopper that we had in Marseille a few, uh, few two years back. He will talk about database notification during load tests. Uh, we will have Andreas Gasmaya, uh, who will talk about integrating and visualizing eBPF metrics in performance, uh, Copilot and Grafana. Uh, and the two other speakers, the well-known Stain Shepherds, uh, who will cover a topic more related with the database. Um, and Arthur Lumes will be the last speaker of this uh, first be a part of the unit stage. All right, so uh, let's uh, start with the first performance rock legend. It's Andreas Grabner, the well-known Andy Grabner, uh, who has been working in the performance world in more than 20 years of experience in shifting between developer, tester, architect, um, cloud uh, evangelists, and a lot of titles. Uh, and uh, he's going to talk about an awesome uh, open source framework called Captain uh, that has been uh, it's an initiative uh, of uh, that has been introduced uh, several years back by uh, Danitrace. Uh, Andy did several uh, PAC with us and uh, uh, showcasing Captain and Captain has involved quite significantly. And I think it makes sense that Andy show give us more details on how captain could be utilized in your project uh, if you have to deal with performance uh, and reliability so andy are you ready to rock on stage i am henrik hey henrik before i kick it off uh, i want to say thank you for for doing and running this i know people have praised you uh, in the past the previous speakers but doing this for 24 hours and i know there's a big team behind you um, that is making all this possible. Thanks to Neotis for allowing you to do all these things. So uh, first of all, my name is Andy Grabner, and today I'm going to talk about introducing Captain 0.8, uh, automating distributed performance and resiliency testing. I also put under the four little cartoons uh, some information that allows you to follow up with me. Uh, Grabner Andy is my Twitter handle. I work for Dynatrace during the day. On the right side, you see at Captain Project. This is the open source project I'm going to talk about today. Follow us or go to the website captain.sh and from there you'll find our GitHub accounts, our Slack and all that. In uh, Chamonix, I talked about performance as code. Let's make it a standard. This was kind of in the early days of Captain when we didn't, I think, call it Captain back then. We talked about how can we automate things like uh, performance definition, SLIs, SLOs. Then I talked that uh, in Santorini, the last trip we did last year together, uh, we're talking about uh, SLO validation with Captain Quality Gates. And then at the Jurassic Pack, I showed you how you can extend Captain with your own SLI data provider. So in case you're completely new to Captain, I also suggest you check out these previous sessions because I think these are great uh, groundwork. Now, I talked about these at the packs. I'm also very happy that since We've launched Captain. We have several great stories, whether it's from Sumit, Roman, or Christian, and there are many more on how they have now uh, integrated Captain into their automation to, for instance, enforce quality gates. So instead of kind of uh, building your own automation around automating metrics after testing. Now, Captain, as was mentioned, this is also why my talk is labeled uh, Captain 0.8. In early March, we released version Captain 0.8 with a couple of release highlights that I will walk through in more detail as part of my presentation and as part of the demo. But the cool things are better visualization thanks to the feedback from the pack on how we are visualizing SLOs, more flexibility in automation. We had a very opinionated approach in Captain on what we automate and how we automate. Now you have more flexibility and also improved eventing, which now supports multi-cluster support, better tracking of tool integrations with started and finished tasks and so on. So let me uh, give you a quick overview now of the agenda. Three major items. I want to give you a quick primer on why Captain for performance automation in case you're new to it or as a refresher. Then important Captain OA changes. 
and how to get started and how to extend Captain. So the primer, right? If you look at our website, then you'll find a lot of great information about how we do SLO-driven multi-stage delivery with performance testing, chaos engineering. And the requirements for Captain are uh, you need a Kubernetes cluster, you need to connect your individual tools, your services, you need configuration files, and so on and so forth. There, and, and while this is all, it sounds very easy, a lot of people come to us and say, well, so why do I need Captain then? Why, why, why still Captain and why not just do it myself? Because I have, like you do it yourself, Swiss army knives like Jenkins and GitLab, and I'm sure there's many other automation tools and, and scripting languages that you have. And first of all, nobody keeps you from doing it. But what I did, I looked at uh, these classical pipelines. So if, for instance, if you're using Jenkins for automation, then it's very easy to execute tests, whatever test tool it is. It's also kind of easy to then add maybe some test result analysis. There's different plugins that you can use uh, in Jenkins to automate performance test analysis. You can also add your Slack notifications in your pipeline to get notified after a test is done, after evaluation is done. You may also want to integrate it in your APM tool. So you can also add another plugin or make REST calls to your APM. Then maybe you want to add an approval process between different test stages, right? It's, it's all possible. And then you add maybe chaos engineering in the end, a security scan in the end. You may add more stages uh, and also maybe add uh, a deployment. And I think what I should have done is figure out correct numbering from six, eight, seven, eight. I guess when I built the slides, I had a little mix match. But what you see here is it, it's all doable with the tools that you use on every day to day basis. But the thing is, you don't want to end up in a situation like Christian, who is responsible for their GitLab environment, where you can see they have 2,800 projects and almost 1,000 CICD pipelines, because he's constantly called in and saying, hey, pipeline is broken, please fix it. Now, why is that? Because a lot of their pipelines are more complex than the microservices that they're deploying or testing. So this escalated pretty quickly, right, if you go down that route. I'm not saying these are not great tools. They are great tools. But if you start building something around performance test automation, you may end up very quickly with a very complex automation set framework that you built in these tools. Now, another thing is one pipeline might be manageable, but if you look at Dita, who is actually one of our uh, cloud engineers that we have at Dynatrace, uh, he said it started really easy with a pipeline, but then they onboarded more and more projects, more and more services. They were doing a lot of copy pasting between pipelines and in the end, ended up with many pipelines that were very complex and was also very interesting. They did an analysis on how much duplicated code there is in these pipelines. Duplicated because all these pipelines do certain things very similar, like reaching out to the testing tool, to the monitoring tool, to the deployment tool, pulling in metrics and doing some analysis. But it's all scattered around. And this simply doesn't scale if you have all the logic built in and you have to maintain all these different permutations. So this is what we wanted to do with Captain and what we're addressing with Captain. With Captain, we give you a very opinionated approach for automating performance, performance analysis, deployment, delivery, and also auto remediation. So if you, for instance, see this script here, we call it the shipyard file, 14 lines. It takes 14 lines of declaration in Captain to do a full end-to-end -end performance testing with an evaluation, with notifications because we built the logic that you normally put in your, let's say, Jenkins files into the core of Captain. Captain manages all of these processes for you. Now, how does this really work and where's the magic behind the scenes? The first thing we said is we wanted to decouple your automation scripts with the tooling because a lot of this is hard coded. So if you look at this here, this on the left could be a classical automation script that you build with build, prepare, deploy, test, notify, and rollback. And it's kind of hard coded with the tooling. So what we are basically saying, when we designed the architecture of Captain, let's break these things apart. Let's basically separate the concerns of what process do I want to automate and which capabilities do I need in order to fulfill the individual tasks on the left side. And then let's use eventing to connect them. Just as we are building event-driven systems, where we're breaking maybe monoliths into smaller components and then connect these individual services then through eventing to fulfill an end-to-end -end business process. It's the same thing we're doing with Captain. That means when Captain is 
automating a process that can contain these six steps, it can only contain two steps, it can, can, can contain 10 steps, whatever it is, as Captain is orchestrating these processes, or we call them now sequences, on the left side, it will then send out events at a particular task, and then you can have one or multiple different tools that can provide a certain capability, like you can have Neotis that can handle a test event. It can also be a different tool, maybe on a different environment. And you can also very easily now say, well, you know what? I may switch from my current tool that might be JMeter to Neotis. And the only thing you need to do is you need to have a new tool on the right side here on the screen that is listening to these events. And you're just swapping the tool by subscribing to these events instead of having to go through all of your pipelines and trying to figure out where is your hard-coded integration with this tool and how can I replace it with another tool. And Captain manages everything in the middle. Captain manages the whole process. So in Captain, we have sequence definitions on the left side. What tasks do you want to execute? It is then using eventing to then trigger and notify the capabilities on the right. And so you need to just figure out, okay, which tools do you have that can provide these capabilities? So to come to my example now, Captain has a very opinionated uh, approach to workflows. With opinionated mean, right, we, here you just specify um, what type of stage you have. Captain is multi-stage capable. For my performance use case, I'm starting with a single stage, which is the performance stage. A stage can have one or multiple so-called sequences, and a sequence consists of tasks that are then orchestrated by Captain. There's some tasks that are predefined, like tests, evaluation, deploy, approve. There's a, a lot, lot of these steps that we have kind of opinionatedly predefined on what they should do and also what additional properties they take. So you define your process, then you connect your tool, your tools. They are connected through what we call a captain service. So in order to connect your tool to captain, you need to write a little intersection layer. Basically, it's nothing else than a subscription where you subscribe to a certain event. So for instance, JMeter here could subscribe to the test triggered event. Prometheus could subscribe to the get SLI triggered, or may also have MetaMost as a notification tool or Slack or whatever you want that subscribes to every event because you may want to forward every event to your Slack channel or to whatever chat channel. Now, in order for you to use Captain, and this is also a little new now in Captain 0.8, you say captain trigger, and what you always trigger, you trigger a sequence within a certain stage. So you can say captain trigger the testing sequence within the stage performance, and then you can give it additional parameters that you may need. Right? For instance, the URL uh, of the test of the of the of the application that you want captain to to run the tests against. So what will happen is captain takes the first task in that sequence it will send a test triggered event, which can then be, for instance, picked up by JMeter. JMeter then says, hey, Captain, I am starting the test at this particular time frame, so just so you know that I'm handling it. Then JMeter could execute the test against the URL. Then when the test is done, it sends back, hey, I'm finished, this is the timestamp, and this is my preliminary result. Once this is done, Captain takes this event and says, okay, tests are finished. It seems there was only one test tool involved. You could also involve multiple test tools. But for instance, Envision running JMeter and your chaos engineering side by side. Captain aggregates all everything up for that sequence or for that task and says, test finished. And then this can, for instance, be taken and automatically be sent to your chat. Now, once this is done, Captain goes to the next task. In this case, evaluation. Evaluation is a very important task because this is where our quality gates come in. This is also where our lighthouse service comes in, which I've talked about in the previous packs. The lighthouse service is registering itself for the evaluation triggered event. It will then reach out to your monitoring tools. Could be Prometheus by sending an event and say, hey, I need to get, I need to get SLIs, service level indicators from whoever, whichever monitoring tool is listening to me. Please give me these, 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 these metrics uh, in a particular time frame. Once this tool, whether it's Prometheus or Dynatrace, New Relic, App Dynamics, uh, Datadog, whatever you have uh, enabled and integrated and listening to these events, once it's done and sends it back, then uh, the Lighthouse is finishing its evaluation and then 
analyzing all the SLIs and SLOs. This is the stuff that I've covered the last in the last couple of, pa of packs, and it's then going to send an evaluation finished event, which again can be used, for instance, for your chat integration. The nice thing is this is completely, as you can see on the left, you have a process definition, you have your capabilities, your tools, and then everything is event driven. You can have one or multiple tools subscribe to the same events and then they can participate in the workflow. What's also nice is you can now easily make changes. So for instance, if you see on the left side now, I have introduced a second sequence or a second stage called production. I may also say I'm gonna replace a meter with Neotis. And I may also add Dynatrace as my monitoring tool in production. So now Dynatrace is listening to give me my SLIs Give me my monitoring metrics as part of the evaluation in production, and Prometheus is only handling testing, for instance, if you have two different testing tools or monitoring tools. So um, you may also add a new tool that can do deployments because you decided to add a, a stage that is then deploying into production. So I'm just focusing on the changes now on the right side. So the test triggered that we saw earlier being handled by Gmeter is now handled by Neotis. I didn't have to change any hard-coded integrations anymore because everything is handled through events. It's nicely decoupling through events, the loose coupling. So now Jmeter executes the test and sends back the start and the finished event. Also, I've added an approval stage. Approval is also something that you typically have in a workflow and we have approvals baked into Captain so you can always add an approval task and then you can either approve it through the Captain UI or you can send it to your Slack channel where you then get a checkbox and you can click yes or no but you already get presented with the results of the previous evaluation. And if we then go on into the next stage, for instance here, right, in production, you can see that production is triggered. If the previous stage finished successfully, then Captain Go On would do a deployment and then as part of the evaluation tasks, I've only focused on certain things here. In this case, Dynatrace would all of a sudden come in because Dynatrace is handling all together SLI events for a particular stage. These are also new things now that we've introduced in 0.8 where you can be more selective on which events do you want, which tool to handle. And not only what type of event like test triggered or give me my SLIs, but also for which projects, for which stages, and also for which uh, services. So you can be more selective on which tools you want to participate in which particular type of event. All right, let's do a quick demo. Um, I wanna show you a demo for obviously performance testing. And here I have prepared a special, let's say a more advanced use case of a performance environment. So let me go over to my captain. So first of all, uh, here is my, uh, Captain website, in case you have never seen it. Here is my Captain installation. Um, I have created, um, I have a, a tutorial also on GitHub where I create uh, automatically Captain, I install Captain on a K3S cluster, and then I automatically create a couple of projects. The one that I'm, I have a, a demo performance project with that is just executing a single performance test, but I know we are all uh, advanced performance experts. So I have an advanced performance use case. Now let me do two things. Let me first off open up the Git repo. Captain internally, in case you wonder where do all the test scripts come from? How does Captain know which metrics to evaluate? Well, these are all config files that you additionally give Captain in a config repo that then the individual tools can access as they participate in the workflow. So let me go over here. This is just my Git repo. And as you probably know, in case you have played with Captain, when you create a new Captain project, you need to define that workflow in a so-called shipyard file. So here's now my shipyard file, and I call this a little advanced because it is a little advanced. I have two stages. I have a functional stage, and I have a performance stage. And what I've done here, I say I have a functional testing stage. When I trigger that sequence, that testing sequence, it will first execute or send an event to run some functional tests. Once they are completed, I have a second sequence in my functional stage. So I already have, a, as, I, as I said, I have a functional stage and then I have a performance stage. As part of my functional test, I want to do about two things. First, run some functional tests. Could be a Selenium test or maybe just a, an easy ping of the URL using a very lightweight JMeter script. 
then I want to run, if this is completed, if, if at least I can uh, uh, access the right uh, URLs, I then have a sequence that is triggered if functional testing finished. So if this previous sequence is passing, then I want to execute another test, however, with a performance light strategy. This could be a very simple Neotis script, a very simple JMeter script, with, maybe with two or three virtual users. And if this is done, if the evaluation is then ex successful, then I go into my next stage, into my performance stage, where I then say, hey, here, I want to trigger this. If my previous stage, if my performance light finished successfully, then I want to run real performance tests, maybe that run for 10 minutes, an hour, or so on. But I can easily now define my workflow. Now, how can I execute all of this? First of all, let me go into this project. So you see that in the Captain, you always get the overview of functional and performance. Right? We see the stages. I also have a so-called service onboarded. This is my app under test. A service could be a single microservice that you're pushing through. It could also be a larger application that consists of multiple services. But it's basically the unit that you're testing. Um, and you have seen, you see here, I have already executed a couple of tests earlier. I have executed tests here, uh, build number one, two, and three. I also, in, in Captain, get a nice overview of my what happened in the functional stage, what happened in the performance stage. Now, let me kick off a quick test, and I can do it through two different means. The first one will be through the Captain CLI, and I'm just kicking off build number four here, or uh, test number four. So what I'm doing here, I'm sending an event to Captain that basically says, uh, trigger the sequence functional in this particular project for the app under test, and then give it this URL and then some additional metadata, like this is test number four and the user is Andy. The other option that I have, so behind the scenes what happens, it just executes and makes an HTTP call, a REST call. I've prepared the same thing that happens in this script, also in Swagger. If you look at this here, Captain provides, let me just zoom in here a little bit, Captain provides an API which allows you to integrate and trigger Captain from any existing tool. For instance, if you're using Jenkins right now for deploying your app, then you can say, okay, Captain, I have just deployed the app on this particular URL. Now, please, you do the job of executing the test, evaluating, executing the next text, evaluating, giving me feedback in my pipe, in my, in my, let's say, Slack. So allowing you to keep your, let's say, Jenkins pipeline very slim and let Captain do the work on what Captain can do best, which is opinionated automation for performance test execution, for performance test evaluation, and some other things that you can do too. But in the core focus of this conference, I want to focus on performance engineering. Right? So I can do the same thing here. Now, what is happening in Captain? You can see here I have uh, currently the test is running or my, my process that I've just kicked off is running. Uh, you may wonder, uh, if you know Captain already, we have uh, a new visualization here. Right? If I go back to the previous one, on the top we visualize the stages with a functional stage and with a performance stage. And this is very, let's say, uh, optimized now to only the information that is relevant in a stage, typically the result. However, if you want to see more what's happening behind the scenes, you can click on few sequences. Now I'm doing this now on the current process that is running to show you what's happening behind the scenes. If I click on few sequence, this now really shows me all the sequences that now Captain executes. Because remember, if I go back, I specified I have a functional stage, I have a testing sequence where I want the test step to be executed. If this success is successful, go to the next sequence that is called performance light, also execute a test, and then do an evaluation against the quality gates, the SLIs and SLOs. So in Captain now, I'm in a functional stage. The tests are executed. In my case, G meter was used, was sending back, start, and, 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 and finished. Then I switched over to the performance stage, uh, performance light sequence. Then tests were executed, and now evaluations are done. So I see here really every step. I also, every step along the way, I get to see all the detailed events that are being sent back and forth, which makes it very easy. However, what I really like is this overview. In the services view, I really get the information that matters to me, which is I get an overview of every sequence, functional and performance, and I really see what matters, right? For instance, here, this was build number three, user end, this was the context information. I see the results of every single metric. 
I also, this is new. We have a new overview of uh, in each individual metric, which value was extracted from the monitoring tool, what was the pass and the warning criteria. We also now have a, an, an, uh, a um, kind of like a deep link into a full screen mode, which is also great because you can now easily link to this screen from your tools that trigger Captain and say, hey, Captain, I just triggered a performance evaluation or a test automation from you. And once you're done, I want to provide a link back to my end users, let's say in Jenkins, and you can do a deep link here to the bridge evaluation. And this is the Captain context, which is the, um, the unique ID that every process gets. All right. So I think this is pretty cool. Right? It allows you to give, it gives you a lot of cool new flexibility. Now, let me go back to the slides. Um, for those of you that are new to Captain, Captain on its own, I think, is already very useful, but it's really useful if you integrate this into your existing automation scripts to take the complexity out of your scripts because Captain has an opinionated way how to execute tests, how to then reach out to the monitoring tools, evaluate your performance metrics, and then come up with the result. So you can see here, you can, yes, you can build it all yourself, but take a look at Captain and let Captain do the things around performance automation, performance analysis. Uh, one example is also from EOT. They're using GitLab as their pipeline. And what they're now doing, they're using Captain in the individual stages where they use Captain to automate monitoring configuration, execute different types of tests, and then just pull back in the end the results from Captain in their pipeline, making their pipeline much smaller, much less complex. So a quick run through over the other changes, even though I think in the demo, I've walked over most of them already. So first of all, in case you wanna have a detailed overview, Jürgen and I, Jürgen runs our Captain community, especially around uh, all the open source integrations we have with other tools. He's a really big proponent of chaos engineering. He's working with other vendors and, and community members. We did a Captain user group where we showed what is new in Captain 0.8. So if you wanna get a detailed view, check out this video. It's on YouTube. The easiest way to get to it is through the Captain resource page. Um, very quick overview. For those of you that have worked with Captain in the past, we used to have a very, very, very opinionated shipyard file where you didn't have a whole lot of choice on what you, what should happen. Um, now we give you more freedom, as I just told you. We have introduced the concept of sequences. You can also um, you know, create uh, sequences that are triggered by some other sequences. So we still have an opinion on what should happen and we have baked in into Captain things like the quality gate, the approval process. But we now give you more flexibility in, in which order should these tasks be executed, what sequence should trigger what other sequence. Um, I also show this in more uh, examples in the YouTube video, but basically uh, this is what I've just shown you in my demo as well. You can have one sequence that is doing one particular type of testing and then have another sequence being automatically triggered in case or depending on the result of a previous sequence, allowing you to chain actions, chain sequences, and really also allow you to go from stage to stage fully automatically or obviously through um, a, a, um, an approval. Another cool thing that happened, and I've just shown you this in the demo earlier, some new visualizations that we brought in, thanks to the feedback from especially the PEC community, how we can, how we need to make these things better accessible and, and, and better visualized, especially what numbers are really behind the scenes, which numbers are being pulled out of a monitoring tool against what did you compare it and so on. Another great improvement is now we support multi-cluster setups. We have separated the control plane of Captain with the execution plane. That means Captain itself, you can install it anywhere. The control com component that is controlling the processes, the workflows, the sequences is doing the SLO validation. But now you can install different execution planes. These are the individual connectors to your services. We call them Captain services. So for instance, you could say, I have one part of my infrastructure where I have Gmeter running, another one where I have Neoload running and Litmus running, and another one where I just use Helm for deployment. So you can install these executors these execution planes in different uh, parts of your environment. And the nice thing is 
they no longer rely just on Kubernetes. You can even just run them as Docker containers because they're just polling the API on a regular interval and basically ask Captain, hey, Captain, I am the new load service and I'm responsible for, sta uh, for, for staging tests. Do you have anything for me to do? So it's constantly polling and then executing things. And what's also great about this, right, the multi-cluster support, this also allows you to do multiple parallel stages and multiple parallel sequences. So you could even say, and this is especially interesting for delivery, you can say if Captain is testing something and you're good with the testing and now you want to deploy it onto different clusters or different target environments at the same time, maybe you have a sandbox environment for your customers, you have your production environment on EKS, on GKE, you can also now model all of this. Now, to wrap it up so that we have more uh, time also for questions, um, you can extend Captain with your own testing tools, observability tools, notification tools, whatever you have. There's a great, great video from Christian. Uh, he is one of our core uh, developers and he talked about the new eventing because if you want to implement a new captain service, you need to at least understand how the eventing goes be between the shipyard controller, which is the core component in captain that takes care of the processes, and then your captain service. So check out this video. Um, an example, the way it works with the Chimeter service is if you want to write your own service like the Chimeter service, you're registering yourself for a particular event like test triggered. If you decide that you have all the information, you can handle it, then the service can respond back to Captain, yes, I'm starting the test now. You would then, for instance, run the test, and once the test is finished, you send back the event or finished. With this, Captain can also keep track of how many tools participate in a, in a task. It also waits until all the tools are finished. We will work on more timeout settings because right now we don't uh, wait on a timeout, but these are all, all things that are that are coming. There's a lot of tools out there already, the tool integrations, NeoLoad, Henrik built integrations with NeoLoad, we have integrations with Litmus for chaos engineering, other testing tools, other generic executions. Go to the Captain Sandbox, get started. There's a template how you can build your own integration. Join our Slack channel, we can, we can give you guidance as well. So, to wrap it up, for those of you that are new to Captain, maybe, Captain is, I think, a really cool project. And I'm not just saying this because I am one of the advocates, but I think Captain can be a really time saver for a lot of you. And for you, it depends on who you are. It could be a dev, an ops, an SRE. The great thing is you can pick a use case. You can start small with just the quality gates, and then you can expand it to do test automation and quality gates. Then maybe you go into progressive delivery, like doing end-to-end -end everything, also auto remediation. So you pick your use case, you then bring the respective configuration, then you connect your tools, and then Captain takes care of all the boilerplating, all the connection of the tools. So it's no longer necessary for you to build all the automation scripts, all the if and then, if then else is in your Jenkins pipelines. We take care of this. Now we don't want to remove Jenkins, we just want to say if you're building performance testing, SRE engineering, chaos engineering into your processes, have a look at Captain because with Captain we have an opinionated solution already for that. Open source, it's all for free, and we we'll make your life easier. All right, with this, Henrik, I think the real superhero besides you is Captain, um, and I hope that more and more we get more and more feedback as we have received in the past from the PEC community. And now I'm open for questions. First of all. Uh, my personal feedback is uh, Captain08 has uh, all the eventing that was uh, required, I think, to follow up and complexify a lot more uh, the uh, evaluation mechanisms. But that, that's, uh, I thought it was a uh, release of the 0 0.8 is a, is a big milestone from, from my perspective, maybe. I think I know that uh, more things will come up in the yeah. picture. Um, and uh, I, we, I don't know if you were able to listen to uh, Shandar Gupta's presentation about uh, uh, intelligence, automations, performance management. So he was referring to chat, uh, to do some uh, voice ops or chat ops. And, and when he was presenting it, and he took an example by building a, a very brief Alexa skills that was querying a, another 
uh, nisli because it was indicators to collect. And I was thinking, hey, uh, this is something that Captain could be uh, basically in yeah. the middle of any voice engine or GCP or, or uh, Amazon or whatever. And because you're, you are through, uh, tell me if I'm wrong, but when you're collecting those indicators, when Captain is evaluating, you are storing also the metrics. So which means uh, Alexa or any any systems could basically, if you ask a question gently, he could say yes or no or yeah. uh, regressions exactly. or whatever. So um, yeah, are, exactly. are, are, are there any plans to build uh, any service on that uh, on that uh, area, uh, more on the voice uh, voice um, ops section? Yeah. So we already have one. Uh, one of our colleagues, uh, Alistair Patton, he already created an Alexa service where he can use the voice integration with Alexa to trigger a, a delivery, a performance test, or just an evaluation. And then there's also then like a response automatic, like the notifications. So when Captain is finished, then it will also automatically post a notification to you where Alexa then says, hey, your performance results are here. Cool. That's awesome. I didn't, I was not aware yeah. of that. So that's a wonderful news. Yeah. And, and so yeah. he, he uh, Chandrash mentioned that, uh, um, uh, so AWS connecting to Slack is more complicated and it seems that GCP has a, a, a bot for Slack where you can basically in Slack drop your queries and, and that will be sent over to uh, GCP to be then utilized uh, the code that has been uh, is it compatible in that in that direction as well so so it means that yeah. the slack integration will be also take benefits of this new service yeah so we also have a slack uh, a slack chatbot from uh, Citrix wrote it um, uh, they wrote one where you can basically use slack as kind of like a command line interface to captain where you can say at captain run the test, give me that quality gate. So that's also, it's basically that chatbot. The, they built a chatbot for that. But it's, it's the same thing, right? You are, whether it's Alexa sending an, a REST call to Captain to trigger something, or whether it is Slack, the Slack bot, it's the same concept, yeah. Yeah. Whoa, that's uh, that's that's amazing. I never heard about it, so that's that's cool. That's yeah. definitely cool. Yeah. I like it. Yeah. Uh, there's a, a small comment from uh, in, from the audience in the chat. Uh, so in addition to pipeline management, is there a way to use Captain to manage your Danatrace tenant configuration? Uh, tenant creations, dashboards, deployments, uh, custom configurations, uh, and so on. Mm -hmm. Yes, there is. Uh, also thanks to one of our colleagues uh, who, so we have an open source project in Danatrace that is called Monaco, stands for monitoring as code, where you can basically define all of your Dynatrace configurations like dashboards and all that stuff in YAML files. And Captain is now the vehicle that can take these and trigger Monaco as part of your workflow sequence that Captain automates. Uh, what you see here, I have one project that is called Dynatrace and I use it for quality gates. And if I look at my quality gate here, and if I click on few sequences, then the first step or the first task I have specified here is Monaco. Monaco stands for monitoring as code. So every time I run the quality gate, I basically say, please extract certain metrics from Dynatrace. These metrics are specified in the dashboard, but I also automate the dashboard creation and maintenance. So behind the scenes here, if I go to my Git repository, and now I go to my Git repository for my Dynatrace project, then under the quality gate, I have a subfolder here with my Dynatrace configuration. This could be dashboards, this could be management zones, this could be synthetic tests, it could be it could be pretty much anything. Um, the reason you know what we have here is the Monaco service. So we have a captain integration with Project Monaco. And this is also the same tool that we at Dynatrace internally use to configure all of our uh, Dynatrace clusters. That we um, that we deploy and monitor, so it's it's the same thing that we've introduced here in Captain. So yeah, the answer is yes, and I think this is what I what I love about it too. And also, what's really cool, and under I have one delivery use case here, and for the three stage delivery, uh, one thing that I do as well in production is 
I also have Monaco here, and Monaco will automatically create a synthetic test for me. So if I use Captain for a multi-stage delivery and I deploy something into production, then if I look at my, my config files, so Captain will trigger Monaco. Monaco will look in the config repo. Basically, this is the config repo that de this declares everything I want to do as part of my deployment automation. If I look at this here, and if I go to my production stage, and I go to my simple node service, then here I have my management zones, my automatic dashboards, my synthetic mon mon monitor. That means uh, this is truly monitoring as code. I just, in my source code repo, said this is what I want my monitoring tool, whether this is now Prometheus or Dynatrace or any other monitoring tool. Um, this is what I want the monitoring tool to be configured for. And then Captain make sure that as part of the rollout of the process, it will it will apply it. Cool. Uh, there's another yeah. question, uh, and I think related or sort of uh, to this is: uh, Are there any plans to integrate Captain with Open Telemetry uh, for decoupling uh, from APM, shipyard, health, and alerts? and general visibility into flow of shipyards if an organization wants to scale this out? Yeah, so uh, for, I think in the last pack, I've showed you how you can create your own data provider. We call it an SLI provider. And I built a very quick pack data provider that was querying information from previous packs, like number of attendees, number of speakers, and so on. So that means you can just create your own uh, damage, uh, Captain SLI provider for something like open telemetry. But quite honestly, Captain itself is not a monitoring tool, right? It reaches out to data sources that can provide monitoring data. Now the question is, if you are using open telemetry, then you also need some type of data store where you actually pull that open telemetry data too. Open telemetry just basically standardizes on what type of data we collect, but you still need to then push it somewhere, whether you're using I don't know, um, some of the open source tools, whether, or whether you're putting it to Prometheus, whether Prometheus is pulling it out or whoever, whatever tool you're using. Um, what you need to then build is an integration between Captain and that data store that is fed by open telemetry. Now, what you could do, obviously, is you could also do a direct integration, maybe, where you build a Captain service that is directed and pulling data from open telemetry, like a, a, a scraper of that data if you want to build it. But I think it would make more sense because the open telemetry data will feed into some type of data source that you then build the integration with that data source. On the Captain Git repo, we already have a couple of requests for the community to build integrations with other APM tools, other observability platforms. Um, so feel free to, to, to build it uh, or chime in, yeah. Uh, all right. Uh, other questions from the audience is, are there any risks or restrictions for Captain when used in a sensitive environment? For example, in, for example, military, banks, government, and other institutions. Yeah, I mean, risks, I, we are an 0.8 release, so I don't claim that we are fully secure to every respect yet. Um, so that's our goal with a 1.0 release, which is a target for us this year. We also want to become a CNCF uh, incubation project because right now we are a CNCF sandbox project. Uh, I'm pretty sure in terms of governance, in terms of security, there's a lot of things that we still need to do. One thing that is coming in, in I think, in, in 8.1, 08.1, which is the next release, which is going to be released this week or next week, is a new secret service because right now the way Captain deals with secrets such as tokens that you need for external tools. They're currently typically stored in Kubernetes secrets, and now we are coming up with our own secret service where you can manage secrets and then the individual services will get access or not access to this service. I think this is one part also in terms of access control. We know that right now we have no fine-grained access control in Captain, right? You have one user that you log in, you have one token to automate the API, these are all enterprise features that we are working on. And um, to answer the question, I think it first of all depends on how you 
deploy and where you deploy, Captain, if you deploy it on Kubernetes and you don't give anybody access to that system, only those people that have should have access to, then I think Captain is secure and fulfills and can be used in regulated environments. Um, but if you expect Captain to come with a lot of these enterprise capabilities out of the box, then the answer is no, not not yet. It's a very, it was very interesting to see Captain, and uh, I'm very keen if our tool, what I tell soon, can integrate. So that's one, and I'm sure that uh, if we can, that there is coming a lot of questions from our team. Yeah, so, so yeah. I, I, you can in, you you can integrate with any tool because in the end. Captain is orchestrating a certain sequence of tasks, right? That's what I basically show here. And then you you kick it off, you trigger you trigger a sequence by sending Captain an H an, a request. So you can do it either through the CLI with a command line interface, or you can just use it through the REST API. Like in this case, I say, hey, Captain, I want you to trigger the uh, the testing sequence in the functional uh, stage of this particular captain project. So if I go back to captain, if I go back to this project, I have a functional stage, and then in here, I have the different sequences specified. I remember earlier, so uh, that means you can you can trigger it from any tool. We have, for instance, a Jenkins library where we just already, we already wrapped that call into a very easy to call, to call uh, uh, API call. We have a GitHub, in, a GitLab integration, we have people triggering it from GitHub Actions. It's just a REST call that you make. So you can definitely integrate that. But to answer Miko's uh, question, I think uh, uh, Miko is, uh, will be considered like a uh, like a data source uh, for Captain uh, because Miko has a will, his solution is collecting uh, metrics on uh, how the database behaves. But that could be ah, okay. a method to have uh, my Superman, the tool okay. of Miko, to that will be a provider uh, that will be uh, that will provide indicators to be yes. evaluate the provider score. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, I, I thought you said uh, pipelines. I didn't understand the uh, the data source. Yeah, of course you can write your own data source provider, um, like we have the Dynatrace provider here. Henrik, you build a new load provider. We have a Prometheus provider. We have a Wavefront provider already. And so you can develop your own provider. And the provider only needs to react to an event called the get SLI event and then provide the metrics. Okay. 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 Yeah. Yeah. Sounds good. So, uh, first of all, thanks, Andy, uh, for this presentation. Like usual, uh, you, 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 you rock on stage. That's, uh, that's for sure. And, uh, it's also thank you to, for being part of the PAC since the first edition of the PAC. So yeah. thanks a lot for all the investments and contribution that you have done over the years. Thank you so much. Glad to be here.